in the afternoon of August the 3rd, 2008, the police station in Fira Sandorini receive a call from a woman. Come to Vervulos quickly. There is a fierce quarrel between a couple. The man has thrown the girl's dog off the balcony. Soon after, five police officers arrive in two police cars to face a grim scene. A man walks down the street with a knife and a woman's head. Police officers surround the man and ask him to surrender. The man falls to the ground, pretending to surrender, and puts his hands on his back. The first policeman approaches him, but the perpetrator stands up and tries to stab him in the face. They ask him again to surrender, and after failing to comply, he takes two bullets to his body. He falls down, and when the officers approach, he lashes out a second time, trying to hit them and wounds one of them on their lip. The killer throws the severed head into the police cadet patrol car, which is unarmed and they are unreactive. He sits in the driver's seat and puts his foot down on the gas. Despite being injured, he drives normally. At some point, he takes a sharp maneuver passing into the opposite stream of traffic, crashing into a passing motorbike, being ridden by two young women, doctors, who were en route to the Sandorini Health Center. One is seriously injured in the collision. She later testified that the shooter tried to clash with the two-wheeler to delay the pursuing officers with the injured woman on the tarmac. At some point, a third patrol car gets involved in the pursuit and rams the perpetrator's car. He jumps out of the driver's seat and tries to attack the officers for a third time, who shoot him once again. We shot at him and he didn't fall. He was in a situation of a mock, they later testified. The gunman, severely injured, is then transported by military plane to Athens. Along the way, the nurses hear him praying. He received six bullets, one of them in the liver. He was operated on and saved after several days of hospitalization. This was the finale of the darkest and heinous crime in the modern forensic chronicles of Greece. But where did it all begin? The killer, a cook named Athanasios Arvanitis, at the time 31, had married a year earlier to the teacher Avamandia Karkali, 25. The latter relocated to Akrotiri Sandorini and the couple moved to the island. Arvanitis got a job at a restaurant in Imerovigli. In retrospect, it was revealed that he had serious psychological problems also receiving treatment. The day before the murder, he had a fight at work with his employer, in some version, because he demanded that his wife be hired at the restaurant, which was not possible, and he eventually resigned. Their last afternoon, the couple quarrelled, claiming that his wife criticised him for resigning from his job. They argued strongly, and the sequel is a black spiral of violence. Avanitis killed the 25-year-old's dog, cutting off his head and throwing it off their balcony. He then killed the woman the same way and went on to the streets. A few meters down, before the police officers arrived, he met an elderly woman with her granddaughter who froze in front of the terrible sight. Grandma, don't be afraid. I won't hurt you. Don't run, he told her. He went ahead and appeared calm, neither shouting nor making sudden movements. It was like holding a doll in his hand, another eyewitness described. At court, in 2009, Arvanitis was sentenced to life 
in prison and an additional 25 years. He described the crime in detail and accepted the sentence completely indifferent. At the Court of Appeal in 2013 in Syros, he argued that he remembered nothing from that day. The defense lawyer said the defendant was suffering from schizophrenia. In court, the doctor of the health center of Firas, who had examined him two days before the crime, he had told him that he suffered from insomnia due to the anxiety he was experiencing from the pressure of his work. The doctor asked for his history but did not reveal that he was suffering from schizophrenia. The psychiatrist who treated Arvaniti until 2003 also testified in court. He said that the attacker, while a soldier, experienced his first major crisis and that since then he needed psychological monitoring and medication systematically. The harasser, after meeting the victim, had stopped receiving treatment. His lawyer argued that Arvanitis was suffering from schizophrenia and asked the judge to decide whether his sentence would be a confinement in a psychiatric clinic or a corresponding section of Vomakos prison where he is being held. The court ruled that the attacker was fully imputable and has remained in jail ever since.